now what we can do is we know what the graph looks like, or at least hopefully we need to remember what the graph looks like. The graph looks like this, right? Do you have a question? Okay. So what I'd recommend doing is if I'm shifting this graph so we know the graph is going to go right 1, right, because I'm subtracting 1 inside of the function, and I'm subtracting 4 outside of the function, so I'm going to go down 4. Now, when we did a quadratic, we knew what the vertex was, right? That was hk. That was pretty simple. However, when we're doing this, we don't, really, we don't have any points, really. Now, obviously, that's a different discussion. But you, know, you could easily plug in points to figure out what they are. Like, for instance, if you plug in 1, what, what is, when you plug in 1 in for x, what do you get for y? One. So you know there's a point 1, 1 there, right? And if you plugged in 2 for x, you get y equals 1 half, right? So we could figure out points. You just plug, in, plug them in and make a table. But the thing that I want to use for transformations is my asymptotes. If my horizontal asymptote is at y equals 0, but the sh graph is being shifted down 4, my new horizontal asymptote is, uh, is going to be shifted down 4. So instead of having an asymptote at 0, if I'm shifting the graph down 4, my new asymptote, Juliana, is now going to be at 4, negative 4. You guys see that? Yeah. Right? And then if my vertical asymptote is at x equals 0, but the graph is being shifted 1 to the right, I now have a new asymptote over here. Yeah. Right? And then if I'm just looking into sketching the graph, I'm not trying to get you guys to be exactly perfect, then we can understand I just need to have my, my little hyperbola curve within those asymptotes. Right? Does that kind of make sense a little bit?